Hello and welcome to another Spin to Knit episode. In this episode we will be making some a self-striping socks using this fibre which is again by Furbeck Fibres and it's a Polworth which is apparently very good for socks. Um, I haven't actually made any socks with Polworth yet but I thought this would be very good fun. And I am quite an experienced sock knitter. Um, I've knit a few in hand spun but I am going to be using a pattern for this because that's what we do on this series. And the pattern I'm going to be using is called Vanilla Chocolate Socks. I'll put all the details in the description box below. This is a free pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it uses a slightly different heel. It's an afterthought heel, which is what I want, uh, but slightly different to the one that I use. And I just, I think, even though I have my basic sock pattern that I use. It's always good to try patterns out from time to time and see how you get on with them because you may find something better than what you've been doing. So yeah, this is the pattern that I will be following. It's the vanilla chocolate socks. It's, um, it is designed for self-striping yarn. It has an afterthought heel. I think it's worked toe up, which is also good. That's what I'm doing a lot of at the moment. Um, but I'm sure it would work just as easily. Heel, da um, heel down, leg down. So yeah, it's a free pattern. All the details will be in the description box, but let's get to the fibre so I can get spinning. So the label says 100 grams and we have 101 grams, so we're pretty much there. And what I want this to do this fibre to do is to stripe so I want to go from wh whichever colour we pick but I want it to go through the stripes and repeat so what that does mean is that we are going to have to lose some of it because it won't blend well going from grey not the way these like blend in together this sort of watercolour effect you're going to end up with a line with these two so we could take it from yellow to yellow, we could take it from grey to grey, we could take it from purple to purple, but we are going to lose some of this fibre in the yarn that I want to create, but that's fine, I can use it for something else. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to open it up and we're going to see how much we have of the fibre. We could pull it from that end. And where we do, ideally I don't want to lose much. I think either way, because of the because this has been dyed in a third, we're going to lose a third where we split it. So I'm going to do this. I am going to split it here. Just going to tease it apart a bit. Sorry about the wobbly camera. And I'm going to break it there. Oh, I will break it. Gosh, that's a long staple. Oh, got a bit of blue in there, so I'll get rid of that. This will get used. If I was going to be short on yarn, I could spin it for the heels, toes and cuffs. I'm not going to be short on yarn. So now when I um, spin this, it will be a continuous colour, which is exactly what I want. So. If I was to spin this end to end, um, we wouldn't have stripes, we would just have a gradient. So what we want is to get stripes, and so we're going to need to split this. And however many times I split it is how many stripes I will get in a pair of socks. So if I wanted three yeah, if I wanted three sets of stripes per sock, I would have to split it into six, which I think is what I'm going to try and do. So I've split it in half and now I'll split these into thirds. And I'm going to try and spin this very fine and do a chain ply to get a fingering weight sing um, three ply 
which is probably the strongest yarn I can get. Oh. What I will just do is put a loose knot in the end of the end that I want to start. So I have six bumps of fibre, so that's going to be six stripes in the socks. So three, three repeats of each colour per sock. So that's all set to spin. Um, I'm probably going to set this up on Joyce and get spinning pretty much straight away. So I've just set Joyce up for um, this spin, which is going to be the sock spin. This is going to be a fun spin. Um, it's going to be a chain ply and I'm looking for a fingering weight yarn. So I'm going to need this to be a really fine spin. So I've set it up on the smallest whirl here and the largest whirl here, which will give me the fastest spin this wheel does and I need it to have little to no take up to get it as fine as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna thread it up and see what we get.
Dex is so helpful. Yeah, so just unwinding it. So you can see we've got these long stripes of the colours that are going to make our self-striping socks. And we've got a really nice, possibly slightly on the thicker fingering weight. <coughs> Um, the thickness of the yarn is possibly slightly on the heavier side of fingering weight. If I get a standard fingering weight skein out, there's this beautiful one by Fruitful Fusion here. It does look ever so slightly chunkier than it, but I think that's just actually the loose ply. It's because it it could have, but this could have been plied a lot tighter. So it could have taken the ply quite a lot tighter. So that's lesson learned for the next time. Yeah, that's lesson learned for the next time. I could definitely have plied this tighter. And so next time I make yarn like this, I will give that a go. But now I'm going to wind it up and show you how I wind it into a gobstopper ball. So winding a gobstopper ball, I start around a couple of fingers. I'm holding the yarn still and moving my fingers and then when it changes colour take it off my fingers and go in another direction so again I'm moving my hand not the yarn around my hand Okay, we've got more blue than I thought, so I'm going to do two stripes of blue. These stripes could be fairly thick. We don't know until we get to knitting it. Oh, we're going into purple now. So every time you hit a colour change, you just take the yarn off your fingers and change direction. It doesn't matter what direction, as long as it's different to the one that you've been going in. And we are getting to pink, so I'm going to change direction again. These, these colours do fade quite gradually into each other, so it's not a dramatic new colour every time. So it's a case of you have to decide when you want to change. And I'm just giving the yarn a little bit of a turn every time I change colour. So as the ball starts to get a bit bigger and you're holding it more, you're still going to be going over those two fingers like you were at the beginning but you're just now holding the ball with your other fingers as well. But you're still going over those two fingers. So this just means that you're not winding the ball too tightly. And it, it, therefore, if it's left in a ball for a while, it won't lose its elasticity, el elati its stretchiness.
Okay, so it's time to um, it's time to cast on the um, socks, and we're using the vanilla chocolate sock pattern. Which the good news is is a free pattern, so it does mean I can actually show you the pattern this time, which is really cool. Um, so I'm going to be making ooh, make make this bigger. Um, I'm going to be making the medium size. I think I have my needles ready to go. These. These needles are a fixed circular. It's a 60 centimeter fixed circular, I think. Um, and these are some that are, they're just cheapo fixed circulars, to be honest, off Amazon, but they have a really nice cable. And I really like that poor socks. I don't know if I can show you that. It's the similar sort of braided wire cable that you'd get with the chow goo. But for buying fixed circular, I find these cheaper. So I really like them. I, if I have a link, I will put it in the description box below. So yeah, I'm just going to be using these because I knit a lot of socks. So I like to have a lot of sock needles on hand. So those are what I'm going for. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be knitting the medium size, which is the inch size. Should give us a stitch count of about 60 stitches. It is 60 stitches here. Um... And so we're going to cast on, it says use the magic cast on method. I'm not 100% sure what that is. I'm sure somewhere in this pattern it probably tells us. But as this is a toe up sock, I am just going to cast on the way I know to cast on toe up socks. So I have our yarn and our needles. Full disclosure, this is actually the second sock. I have knit the first one, but the footage got corrupted. So we're all going to pretend this is the first time I've done this. Um, but yeah, I could show you that first sock, but then you wouldn't get the surprise. So yeah, we're just gonna pretend. But yeah, full disclosure, I have knit this before. That's I, I can't lie that this ball of wool is smaller. It's half the size. Um, okay, so this is the way that I cast on for toe up socks. So the first thing you're gonna do is actually you don't need that much of a tail, but you're gonna make a slip knot. And you put the slip knot on your back needle. So holding both needles together, you put the slip knot on your back needle. Sorry if I've got ink on my hands. And then you hold your both of your yarn ends like this. It doesn't matter which yarn end is which. And then the yarn end that is at the back wraps around the front needle. This is going to be really tricky to do on camera. And then the yarn that's at the front wrapped right around the back needle. And because they sort of change place. I'm sorry if you can hear cat noises. So that's four. Five. And then you just pull out one of the needles. And that becomes, so then this is your working needle and this is your back needle for magic loop. And I'm just going to knit across on this first row. So that's across the first needle. Turn and pull your stitches so that they're on the back and pull the front one out to work them. This first stitch I always knit normally. And then the rest of the stitches on this row, I knit, you knit through the back loop so that they're not going to be twisted. And it's always a little bit fiddly to start toe up socks, but once you're past the first couple of rows, you just into it and it's so much speedier I think than starting off with a hem. If you're not, if you're one of those people like me that just starting a hem. I want to knit the socks, I don't want to knit the hem. But I'm quite happy to knit the hem when it gets to the end. Okay, so that is the first row. So I don't usually use a stitch marker to mark which is the front and which is the back. 
because I know that this tail end is always going to be on the right. So I know I've done a complete row if this tail end is on the right, but, it, <clears throat> but if you want to add a stitch marker to the front rows, front stitches, so that you know when you've got back to the front, by all means, give that a go. Um, and so the... So the instructions for increasing on the toe are exactly what I normally do. So knit front and back, knit to last two stitches before marker, knit front and back, knit one. Um, and then the next round, rip, knit. And then you just repeat that until you've got the amount of stitches that you want. So that's basically what I'm going to do. Just be very careful I don't start knitting with my tail end. I need to trim that, it's a bit too long. Sorry about the scratchy cable on the table. I'm sure that's very annoying. I'm trying I'm trying to be higher, but Ooh. Here we go. And I forgot to do my front and back. Okay, so that's the first increase row. And next is a knit row, and I'll just keep going. So I will um, meet you back here when I finish the toe. I'm going to go and sit down and knit for a bit. toe done. I think this yarn is knitting up fairly neatly. It sort of gradiates between the colours really prettily. So those increases along the side because they're, there's only one stitch in between them rather than on a, on a toe decrease where there's usually two stitches. It, you get this really nice little neat edge. Ignore that little blip. That's... But yeah really nice increases so that's the that's the toe done basically and now I just have to knit round and round and round and round until I get part way up the sock and then there's a few increases for the heel but we'll get to that when we get to it I am gonna um, yeah I'm, I'm gonna grab some snacks and make a cup of tea and um, just crack on and knit the foot I've just done the increases to go up into the heel and it's increasing both sides of the back every other row for seven rows for the size that I'm doing so you're increasing by 14 stitches so it's just this little bit here so if I go back to my sock ruler 
This should now be the correct size. Uh, yeah, bang on, bang on. Um, oh, it's lovely when maths works out. So now I'm going to go put in the heel. And um, I don't want to break up this stripe pattern. So I'm going to use the contrast yarn. Oh, it's not contrast yarn. If you remember at the beginning, I had like 30 grams of fiber left over. So I spun that up separately and um, just spun it end to end. So I've got this yarn here, which is longer bits of each color. So it's just a, just a longer gradient than these stripes. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip this around um, and I'm going to do this heel in the yellow because it's the furthest color away from where I am. So if I flip this around, don't do this to your yarn, by the way, it's really not good for it. The color in the center should be yellow and I'm going to do the heel in that. It's a pretty standard um, wrap and turn heel. Um, by all means, have a look at the pattern. It's a, it's a really good little heel. Um, but I'll, I'll show you as I'm doing it, what I'm doing. But yeah, just a, just a wrap and turn heel. a bit awkward to film. Um, that's the first part of the heel done. So I've done all the first set of wraps going in to the centre. It said to leave six, 17 stitches in the middle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm gonna start picking up the wraps. And um, so I'm going to go to the first wrap, pick it up, and then I'm going to wrap the stitch after it again. So I'll have... Oop, You'll end up having two wraps around it. So you can see like that's one wrap and it'll have two. And then going back the other way and going back the other way. And that's the way that you get that sort of wedge heel. I'll show you when I've finished. So that's the finished heel. It's quite a neat little heel actually. I like it. It's really tidy along the sides and the pickups are really tidy. I'll show you that when I get a bit further up. Um, but yeah, the, so... The stitches that I increased, I now have to decrease on the um, back of the leg of the sock. Uh, but other than that, it's just round and round until the hem. So um, I've pretty much lost the light for today, so I'm not going to film anymore today. But I might knit on it a bit. But I might continue knitting for a little bit. Although I haven't done any spinning today, so I definitely want to do some spinning. Um, so yeah, I'll pick this up as my sort of stockinette knitting. Hello, Jax. <laughs> yeah, over the weekend I'll pick it up as my um, round and round knitting. And um, film again on Monday. So it's now Monday and I'm just picking this up. Um, over the weekend I've managed to knit up the leg. These stripes are coming out quite wide. And um, yeah, it's actually my birthday today and so Jax gave me the lovely present of pulling all the stitches off the needle. So I think I have dropped one. Yes, I have. Hello, Carl, my love. 
Oh, that's loud. Um, so I was just up to where I was going to start the ribbing, but I'm going to knit another row and make sure I've picked up all the stitches. And then I'm going to start the ribbing, and it's a three by one ribbing. And hopefully I can get that finished tonight, and then get this video finished over the next couple of days. But yeah, I'm really loving the colours when they, 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 are, they are this bright. And... Lovely. It's really been an enjoyable knit. So, so that's the first sock finished and I just have to bind off and I've just brought it upstairs to the studio so I can show you how I do the bind off. I've just realised that this background is probably not the best because it's going to be grey on grey so I might just change the background. So that, that is the first sock finished there now. Um, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. It was a joy to knit, an absolute joy. Um, the ribbing, I'm only doing a short cuff at the top, is a three by one and not my favourite. I don't think it finishes it quite as nicely as a one by one or a two by two, but that's just what this designer has chosen to put in the pan. If I knit these again, I wouldn't do this ribbing. I would do a different one. And it's a personal choice. You can do what you like. Um, it's just, yeah, I wouldn't choose to finish it this way. However, I am very pleased with the sock. Um, I just thought I'd bring it up to the studio to do the bind off to show you how I do that a bit more up close. Wherever I go, there are cats. So I do a sewn bind off. So I've just got a needle and some scissors. Um, in order to know if I'm going to have enough thread, I measure the length round once and I then triple that, at least triple that. I usually like do it four times like that. And snip that. You don't want your thread to be too long because it makes doing the sewn bind off a bit of a pain, but you also do not want it to be too short because you don't want to be um, joining your thread. You can do that, you can join your thread, it's just a bit, you just end up with more ends to sew in. Right. If we move a puka tail, I'll show you what we're doing here. So this should hopefully focus. So the, I've threaded the end onto my needle and I'm going to go into first two stitches as if to purl. And pull the thread through. Don't worry about pulling it tight there too much at the moment, we'll do that in a minute. Um, and then you're going to go into the first stitch as if to knit and slip it off. And at this point I don't pull the thread through because I can do the next bit in one pass. And then purl-wise go through the next two stitches. And then I pull the yarn through. And this is where I pull it tight and close that little gap. And the cats are being a nightmare. I could shut them out, but I've only got a limited amount of time to film this. So again, Knit wise off and purl to and keep them on. Grumbly, grumbly cats. And just keep pulling it as you go. So, yeah, knit one off and purl to keep it on. You can do that in one pass so you're not having to thread the yarn through twice. It's fairly speedy bind off and it's a fairly stretchy bind off. It's great for the top of socks because it has a very similar look to a long tail cast on. When you get to the end of the first needle you're not going to have two stitches to purl into and at that point you just slip all the stitches onto your next needle if you are doing this on magic loop if you're doing it on dpn that would happen more often if you're using the little circulars you're gonna be fine but yeah can you see it's got quite a bit of stretch to that okay i will see you when i have finished when you get to the last two stitches you're gonna slip the first one off as before and then you're going to go into that purl stitch and you're going to pick up the first purl stitch you went into. First stitch purl wise, sorry. And bring that through and then to finish just go back through knit wise the stitch that you've just taken off. 
And that just finishes it off quite neatly. And I'll weave in that end. But yeah, that is the bind off. I really like it. It is really quite stretchy. Really quite stretchy. I mean, this yarn is just lovely. It is so bouncy and it, feel, it feels like silk. If you've ever sort of had like the the raw silk, I don't know, but yeah, this it just feels amazing. Uh, it does. It feels it feels like silk. It, this was a Polworth yarn, um, a Polworth fiber, and just just incredible. So yeah, that's our finished sock. I'll get rid of the stitch marker. I am going to block these. Um, I will put in a little bit of footage now of the second sock. Um, wink wink and um, there isn't a lot of footage but I will put in a little bit so you can see that So here are the finished socks and um, obviously they still need blocking and then I'll do some pictures of me modelling in them and whatnot. Um, they did turn out quite differently with the stripes so obviously I did a fairly poor job of splitting the fibre because some of the stripes are a lot narrower than I mean this you can see here this is the length of this stripe and it's the whole leg of this foot on this one um, but I'm fine with that I mean that is definitely a lesson for if I did this again, if it really bothered me, it doesn't. I absolutely love these as they are. I actually really like the fact that this has the two wider stripes and this has the three on. I think they, that very much makes them like the sisters, not twin socks, because they seem to go together really well. Um, the fact that I did different heels because I did the blue heel on this one because I was in the middle of a yellow section and then it just made sense to do the yellow heel on this one because it's in the middle of the colour repeat. Yeah, no, I absolutely love them. So I'm going to go and block them and um, try them on. I cannot wait to try them on. internet episode i really hope you've enjoyed this episode it was a joy to make from beginning to end um yeah the the spinning was lovely it was probably my first fine spin on joyce my ashford traveler but yeah it was really really enjoyable the fiber the polworth is just a joy to spin um plying i went for a chain ply with this one which is possibly my favorite um, plying method at the moment it's slowly becoming overtaken by traditional three ply but yeah the, it was it was a nice fun thing to ply um, I do I do enjoy a chain ply it is good fun um, and the knitting process who doesn't love knitting socks I mean come on but yeah the um, the idea this episode was to make self striping socks and I think we can say we have achieved that um, I used the vanilla chocolate sock um i used the vanilla chocolate sock pattern by um annika abbott and um i'll put all the links in the description below it that is a free pattern on ravelry and it is a really lovely pattern if you have never knit toe up socks before it would be a really good one to start with um, i enjoyed doing the wrap and turn short row heel 
and um, I wouldn't normally put increases in before and after my heel sort of like an afterthought type heel um, and that's really good I'm going to look forward to seeing how these wear and how the fit is other than that, I have no complaints about the pattern whatsoever, just things that are slightly personal choice. I will do this heel again, this um, wrap and turn heel, but I do have a very similar heel that I do more often that is a bit simpler, so I, it may be that I don't use this heel very often. Um, and the ribbing at the top, if I make these again, I'll just change that to a 2x2 two two or a 1x1 one one rib, just because I like the look of that better but it definitely does not distract from the stunning beauty that is these socks. I, I am absolutely over the moon with them. Can't wait to try them on. And they are still a little bit damp at the minute, but as soon as they are dry, I will be walking around and take some pictures to put in at the end so you can see how they look on my feet. Okay, I'm gonna wrap things up. So. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to give it a like if you did and um, share it with your friends. That's, that's always brilliant. If you are not already a subscriber, please do subscribe. You can also click the little bell icon next to it, which just informs you when I have a new episode out. And hopefully next month there'll be two spin to episodes. Also, please, um, if you have any ideas for patterns for future spin to knit episodes, do just leave a little comment below this video and let me know what you would like to see knit up enhancement it can be anything literally anything um accessories garments socks whatever if there is a pattern that you would like to see knit enhancement and you'd like me to make an episode of leave it in the comments below and i will definitely take a look and yeah i need i need to get some more spins on the go for some few future episodes so getting some pattern ideas would be amazing but yeah i'm gonna shut up so um thank you again so much for watching i will see you really soon goodbye my friends <laughs>